Now, what happened when we started Spring Boot? So this is the magic line. Let's say spring application dot run takes in two arguments. One is the class and one is the command line arguments that you would pass to the main method. The important thing is there is a static class called spring application has a static method called run and it takes in this class. And this class has an annotation, which is a spring application annotation. And this does a whole lot for you. Now, what are the things that it does? First of all, it sets up the default configuration. You remember I told you that Spring Boot favors convention over configuration. It addresses the 80% use case. And the default configuration addresses that 80% use case. For the most part, the default configuration is fine. So that's what it goes with. The second thing that it does, it starts the Spring application context. What Spring is, is a container for all your uh, code that runs on your application server, right? Let's say you have business services, you have your controllers, you have your data services. Spring X is a container for all those different services. And this container is what's called an application context. Every Spring application has this application context, which runs when the Spring application runs. So this Spring Boot starter creates that application context. What it also does is performs a class path scan. The way to plug in code into Spring Boot is by creating your own custom classes and annotating them with the intent. Let's say you want to create a business service. You create a class and annotate it with add service annotation. You want to create a controller. You create a class and then annotate it with the controller annotation. So you're basically marking your classes and say, okay, this is a service, this is a controller, this is something else and so on, right? So each class contains a marker. Now Spring has to look at all those classes and say, okay, depending on the marker, treat it differently. If it's a service annotation, treat it as a service. If it's a controller annotation, treat it as a controller. In order to know what to do, in order to know what the files are that you have marked, it has to actually scan the class path to identify all those different classes that you've annotated. That's what the class path scan does. Spring, on starting up, can potentially look at your class path which is looking at all your code and see if there are any classes which have the special annotations. If it does, it considers them and it treats them as such. A service is treated as a service, a controller is treated as a controller, and these classes typically have other metadata which also tells Spring how that controller needs to behave or how that service needs to behave. So Spring infers all that from the annotations and it does the right thing. But the point here is for it to do that, it needs to scan the class path. Finally, it actually starts the Tomcat server, which is what we access, right? We were able to access a URL, and we, of course, got an error page because there was nothing in there, but it was actually a Tomcat server that got started. Did you download Tomcat and install it? Well, no, you did not. This came with Spring Boot, and this is why the output of Spring Boot is a standalone application. We covered that in the previous video. Standalone means you don't have to create a servlet container, Spring Boot is all you need to start that application and start a separate container, which is really cool.